minus 20 Celsius, so minus 4 after the. It doesn't look too bad outside, but it's really cold. Uh, I didn't touch my car because I was just going uh, down the street to, uh, you know, Starbucks and then uh, to the Sydney place to go for lunch. But with the wind, it's real bad. Now I want to take my car. Um, I wanted to mention that I'm gonna change back to uh, heavy hold TV signs signage. Um, I think it'll make it easier for viewers to differentiate, you know, regular videos from heavy hold videos. So from now on, again, if I drive my truck, like my transport truck, and or I have a load on the trailer, but even if I drive, let's say, you know, deadheading somewhere. Uh, it'll be called heavy hold TV episode and then number and then in the description I will put uh, you know a few words of what this episode is about and then if you just see a regular title or it says Sergey Drachev dash something that means it's not about heavy hold it's something personal like what I'm doing right now just a quick update or maybe occasionally uh, I'll do something in uh, Russian then if you see some Cyrillic characters that's not about heavy hole uh, either and yesterday after I delivered that load I picked up uh, two uh, two Spintec mufflers the two identical uh, Super Pro Street 9000 this is the most aggressive muffler Spintec makes and I had it painted with a uh, high heat paint and they came in these two boxes so what I'm doing on I'm what I'm doing is I'm trying to find a company I mean a shop that can uh, modify my exhaust on the Mazda so it's gonna be a single to two mufflers this is two inch in two inch out uh, they wouldn't be too loud because I know uh, I had a similar, I had the same muffler on my 2012 Mazda. It sounded fine and it adds, uh, you know, performance. Uh, just sounds a little bit sportier. I want to go back to Florida. If I get all this white stuff, <laughs> jeez, it's Billy. Everything is frozen. Welcome to Canada. I just emailed my brother asking about the what 
asking about the weather in uh, Moscow and he said it's zero or plus two which is 32 to 35 F jeez oh, but I need to drop off my laundry and I want to check on my uh, transport truck uh, which is uh, parked at the Mac because uh, they say they fixed the steering wheel uh, they, I asked them to reset that uh, steering angle sensor and they said they also took off the, the steering wheel put it right and then reset the sensor and they called me yesterday saying that they did that but the problem is that uh, the pipe I need for the AC for the leak is $600 and that pipe was like 10 feet long or something I don't know but they said they, they will rebuild it I mean they they know a shop that can actually build the rubber uh, like 100% rubber hose instead of aluminum and rubber and that's why it's leaking where it, and you cannot just replace the rubber uh, little connector in there and so I said keep the truck because I don't need it I don't have a load but Monday is a family day here in Canada, so nobody's uh, nobody's working. And once again, my truck is parked at the Mac during this freeze. And last time I left them the truck with the trailer, if you remember, I had all kinds of problems with air suspension. You know, it's just because of the cold. So well, at least now I don't have the trailer. My trailer is in my parking yard, but the truck is over there and this, in the morning it was minus 23 celsius which is like probably minus 8 fahrenheit but what can what i'm concerned about is that over now it's getting a bit warmer like by a couple of degrees but overnight it'll be minus 26 it's probably like minus 10 f you know and that's a good thing that i have full tanks of fuel and I feel confident uh, about the fuel quality because if you remember I fueled up at the Flying Jane Fort Erie and that's Canadian diesel and so it has lots of anti-gel in it already plus I added a bottle but still it'll be interesting to see how the how my transport truck will uh, handle this uh, last according to the meteorologists cold span of this winter dealer before I check on the truck I decided to do some shopping so uh, I, last time I found all my uh, tail lights are pretty much gone on the trailer so instead of spending 25 bucks Canadian for one LED light I just spent five dollars for a regular one so these are four lights for the trailer but it's too cold now I'm not gonna touch them and I got another box of uh, clean flow anti-gel because I don't trust like especially American uh, fuel when I fuel in the States and then come to Canada uh, you know they don't always put anti-gel when it's uh, when it's warm no this is not mine GMC Freightliner what's a Freightliner is doing at the there you go M A C K Mac All right No oh, this is a real <laughs> I left a bottle with water look This is not a joke Okay let's see spiral the little spiral is on meaning that the engine is being heated so once it's once it goes off 
Oh, ich bin nicht so. Started. Shows minus 16 Celsius. Which is uh, what? If minus 20 was minus 4, minus 16 is probably plus 2 or plus 3F. Let's see what the coolant is. Coolant is minus 11 Celsius. Jesus. Huh. Why there's no smoke? Pressure is okay. Now I think it's gonna get better. But the oil pressure that's what they say that it's very dangerous when the engine is cold and you run it at too high RPM. You see, it does want to go. I know from experience that I cannot increase the RPM past 800 uh, before the coolant reaches plus 20 Celsius. And we see right now it's only minus minus three, so I gotta wait. If I try to increase it now, see, doesn't wanna doesn't wanna do it. And look at the pressure. Jeez. Wow. The pressure seems even to increase. What the heck? Now this is the Mag dealer where I usually do it. And uh, well, at least it's climbing up, right? So. But I think it's a very good thing to do, you know, when you uh, when you operate your uh, business in such a cold climate, is especially when the truck sits for a couple of days, and one of these days happens to be extremely cold, like it is today. Like it is today. Oh, zero. Yes, sir. 32F. 20 more to go. Oh, the pressure is falling. Cool. I'm gonna warm it up till it uh, till it reaches uh, maybe 150 F. Till I have some uh, hot air coming out of here. Oh, it's over uh, 20 C. So now I can increase the PM. Now just a matter of minutes before it uh, reaches uh, operating temperature. Well, let's check. Let's check my battery. Okay, the battery is fine. All right, and I I decided to be smart about it because this truck is very cold. And I have my car, which is already warm, so I'm sitting in the car while the truck is uh, is warming up. <sighs> oh, now I can see smoke, white smoke coming out of my Max exhaust. So that's a good sign because I was 
a little bit scared for it at first. They're like, why there's no nothing else coming out of the stacks, you know? And the best feature of this car, of this Mazda, is this. <laughs> I really love these, uh, you know, uh, heated seats. So nice. And plus, you can uh, choose the degree, like hot, medium, or low. It's such a big help in this uh, cold Canadian climate. Okay, I shut off the, the Mac. The coolant warmed up to 165F for about 75C and the oil was 150F for about 60 Celsius so I think that's enough. The air was already you know coming out coming out real hot out of the fan so hopefully this charged the battery a little bit and this will help the truck to survive the night. Uh, this coming night which uh, they say is going to be even colder than the previous night so now the, la the last errand I gotta do is just uh, drop off my laundry at this uh, laundry place where I usually take it okay so let's see uh, I drop off my laundry, I warmed up the truck, I bought uh, uh, lights for the trailer, I bought anti-gel, I don't think there's anything else uh, to do today, like professionally. Uh, speaking, oh, I've been uh, watching lots of videos about uh, uh, heavy hauling, trying to see, you know, what should be my next goal as far as the uh, equipment is concerned because as you might know my trailer is prepped for the uh, fourth axle and but there's a debate whether uh, it's better to get a fourth axle on the trailer or get a stinger or a booster those of course are much more expensive but then you get uh, I believe you get more weight credit Whereas a 4 axle tra trailer, you'll get, let's say, I think Ohio just gives you 68,000 pounds. Like just 8,000 pounds extra compared to 60 for 3 axle. Uh, but if you have a Stinger or Booster, I think they will give you a full 20,000 pounds extra. So, but I'm trying to, you know, come up and uh, closer to my trailer's capacity because my trailer can do 55 tons. Uh, of course, I don't want to do 50, 55, but if I could do 50 or 100,000 pounds or at least 90 or 95, you know, that would uh, increase my earnings uh, more because I do see occasionally uh, loads that are just too heavy for me, you know. Like I'm nicely positioned, uh, I think in this heavy segment with the seven axles, it's not too heavy, not too light. But still, you know, once in a while you, you, you run into a load when my dispatch is calling me and asking and I cannot do it, it's just too heavy. You need at least eight axles or maybe even nine. Those are rare, but the money can be pretty good. You know? Yeah, hi. Do you guys still have uh, have any coffee left? Pardon? Do you have any coffee left? Coffee? Yeah. Yeah, we have coffee. You have coffee left, right? Like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble understanding you. It's a joke. It's a joke. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm I just want a tall Americano. Tall Americano, anything in it? No, that's it, just black. Just black? All right. 278 if you see at the window. Thank you. Welcome. Hi. How are you today? I'm good. Back again? 
Yeah, I just want to go. Just want to go. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Yeah, I was there this morning. That was the same guy. He says, you back again? <laughs> yeah, it's cold. That's it. I'm just going back to my hotel. Watch some TV, make the movie. And do more research.